Today we are going to start on um, cellular networks. Now the cellular networks could be a class, a whole course by itself and there are universities where they teach a whole course on telecommunications networks. We are going to try to do it in two lectures actually 1G, 2G, 3G in two lectures then 4G and 5G in two, three lectures. So basically we have very few lectures. So this is a concentrated version of telecommunication networks. We will talk about how the cellular telephony started, how they use the frequency again and again. Then one of the very common standards I couldn't skip is GSM. GSM is 2G but it is used worldwide including here and if you have a phone right now very likely it is a GSM phone. So GSM we have to talk about that then we talk about GPRS Edge and 3G WCDMA and HSPA and uh, after that we move on to 4G in the next lecture. So basically back in 1970s AT&T when it was still a one company <coughs> monopoly developed a plan that they could provide radio services radio services to, to the whole country using this plan where if they are given seven frequency bands they could do use it again and again and again using hexagonal cells. Okay? So they would put one here and then six around it and then one here and six around it. <coughs> so what will happen is no two frequencies in this in, in the adjacent zone would be same. You see, so three and six, one and two. So there won't be you know edging edges uh, interference. So this is basically so in, in so in 1977, then FCC said, okay, let's begin. And um, and they said, of course they didn't. They, I mean, by that time people were already talking about breaking up AT&T. It was a monopoly then, and so they said we will give it to two companies: one AT&T Bell, and one to something which is not a Bell. And so American Radio Telephone Service, and both services started in 1983. All right, just for experimentation. Then finally when everything worked, seemed to be working then they said okay alright we will go country wide and they divided the country into areas and two kinds of areas metropolitan areas and the rural areas. Metropolitan areas are the densely populated like St. Louis, rural areas is if you go just 100 miles from St. Louis. Okay. And so 75% of the US population lives in the metropolitan areas and that covers only 20% of the US area. Right? It's like 80-20 rule. Right? And that was divided into 306 areas MSA. MSA is the metropolitan service area. Then 428 rural service areas RSAs. These basically were larger cell sizes. Okay. Now the area is bigger, population is less, you make less money, so not everybody wants to go there. Everybody wants to go into the Manhattan downtown where there are millions of people, you know, rich people, you know, as opposed to, you know, here, right? So, <laughs> so the basically, so anyway, so the area was divided into this and everybody had to basically kind of um, petition for that area. And then they said, we won't give it to one company. In every area, we will give two carriers, A and B carriers. Okay. Incidentally, B stood for a bell. Okay. B, A and B is not A, B, C, D. B stood for a bell and A stood for alternate. Alright. So, in every area, there will be competition. Two companies can offer services, A and B. And they said, we will give you 100, 832 channel pairs, so channel is 30 mega, 30 kilohertz. This is all came out from the experiment before that we need 30 kilohertz to send 64 kilobit voice. The voice was 64 kilobit in those days. And so for 64 kilobit voice, they needed 30 kilohertz going down, 30 kilohertz going up, so that is channel pair. And they didn't, they cannot use the same frequency for receive and transmit, so they had basically you know two frequencies one for down one for up 45 megahertz apart 
Okay, so they are far away so that the antennas will not get confused. <coughs> All right, so 832 channel pairs in each area, 416 per carrier. So half of the channels for this carrier, half of the channel for B carrier. 45 megahertz between transmit and receive frequency, 30 kilohertz per channel, and 1 to 7 frequency reuse with hexagonal cells. And they said, well, if I give this frequency to this one, then this, I mean, they were giving out different areas, right? So they, you know, basically they planned it accordingly using hexagonal cells. By the way, all this is history because we don't use hexagonal cells anymore. Okay. And we don't use frequency division anymore, right? This is the first version of the cell phone. And since the frequency was, was free, a lot of people applied for it. And um, at that time, they didn't realize that this is a money maker. So they gave it out free. And then finally, when a lot of people applied, they started a lottery system. So if you're lucky, you get it. <laughs> All right. But anyway, they wanted to make sure that whoever won the lottery, they have to have at least one market in by 1990. If you didn't do it by 1990, then you know you lost your contract and then you have to pay, pay so much fine and this and that. So you cannot just go and apply for a you know thing and then you try to sell it to somebody else. All right. So at least one system in every market by 1990. System? Why lottery system? I guess. Yeah. Right. Basically, the thing is, if there are ten people wanting the same same area, St. Louis, then who should be who, who should the government give? So it is a random number, flipping. It's a flip a coin, right? And okay, all right, if head comes, you get it. If you know, tail comes, you get it. That's the thing. So that's what it is, lottery system. So it's not that you have to buy a lottery ticket or anything, but basically, you know, <laughs> you probably have to buy a lottery ticket because you have to put a $10,000 deposit before you apply, right? <laughs> and this is million dollar business. Right. Now the cell sites, they're being planned and nobody wants the cell site in their area. Would you want, actually this is a, it, it is a big money maker. If you put a cell site in your home, you get a lot of money from the cell phone company. They pay you $500 a month or $1,000 a month. In fact, it, in the house, in front of my house in India, there is a big tower. It looks so ugly. But more than ugly, I'm afraid that this will cause some kind of problem with all this power coming into, <laughs> radiated into our house. But the guy is making money. Right? So he is happy. He doesn't know anything about the wireless or anything. He just, you know, a tower is there. Right? So anyway, so nobody wants a tower. But what happens is they are everywhere. Okay? Unless you don't see them. And they are hidden. You know, so this is not a real tree. Okay? It's a tower. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is not a real um, whatever that is, you know, it's, it's a tower. Okay, similarly, this is water tank is a tower and this is a tower. So, this is how the cities are making money. This is how non-profit organizations are making money is by, you know, just letting telephone company come in and, you know, use the property. NIMBY, not in my backyard. And then... What happens if you need a tower where, you know, when there is suddenly a game or something, you know, a big fair, then you get a cow. Okay? Sells on wheel. And they bring a truck with the whole tower. So now, actually it turns out the cells are no longer hexagonal. And they are no longer... Um, Actually, I mean, frequency division will come later. But basically, the size of the cells could be macro, micro, pico, or femto. Macro cell is what we call a normal size cell. And um, it is generally a section of a city, more than one kilometer radius. Micro is, so what is happening is because the number of users is growing and growing, one cell tower cannot sustain all of these one kilometer radius people. So they are putting more and more tower in the small areas. Right, those are called micros. Micros are less than one kilometer neighborhoods, and picos are busy public areas. If you go into mall, there are many many cells inside the mall. Okay, every floor might be a cell, and so those are picos. And if you go inside a house, that's the family. And femto cells actually, um, yeah. So femto cells actually, I do have one in my home. 
I don't, I was just thinking whether it is a SEM2 or not, I, 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 I don't think it is SEM2, but basically what happens is, if you call your phone company and say that, um, that uh, the signal is not very good, this and that, and if you're living in a suburb or something like that, but of course they don't have towers, then they will give you this thing which they have given me, is that you put near your window, it will receive the signal from the window and then broadcast inside. So the idea is it will cover the home. Some companies charge money for it, some companies give free for free. So I mean I got it free. But basically you can try with your phone company if you have a problem. So macro, micro, pico and family.